Um, and what would in this next gen, you know, uh, justice feminism, what does feminist foreign policy look like? You know, because I now you're at this point in the evolution of it. You know, you're not just squawking or you're not just protesting. You're actually helping make change happen for big group. I mean, I, I, th that's one of the things that really interests me about the idea of transnational feminism too. It's not just person to person, you know, saving one thing, but you're really creating this broader movement um, to affect positive change. So. And, and, and I would add that, that that broader movement is really about structural change. Right, mm -hmm. so that it's not about a quick fix or yeah. like a fad movement, right? It's about that lasting, long lasting structural change. Now, the feminist foreign policy, we've seen some examples starting, let's say, in Sweden, right, uh, in 2014. And they said, well, feminist foreign policy is one that centers women, that centers women's issues. And then you had the next iteration in the two countries that border the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Um, and my colleague uh, Magda Hinojosa in the School of Politics and Global Studies has written extensively about this, where in 2017, you had Canada and Mexico saying, okay, let's do feminist foreign policy kind of 2.0, which says, okay, well, what are the core values of feminism? And now as justice feminism has taken root, I think the flowers of those seeds are gonna blossom in a feminist foreign policy that is about justice, equity, and inclusion. Something else that just makes, I think is interesting is these tend to be like big, hairy things. You know, you're not trying to solve small problems. You're talking about sex trafficking and climate change and, you know, these huge things. And what can transnational feminist movements teach us about um, how to do a better job with these long range issues? You know, that's because that can be an issue, certainly in the system, right? Nobody wants to solve this incredibly broken thing, immigration or whatever. Um, what can we learn from them? So a couple of things I would say, I think first thing we can learn from them is that they do their research and that they're ground up, right? So they're, they're grassroots, they're bottom up, they're, they're not top down. So feminists, you know, organizers have been working in the underground, planting those seeds. They're the tillers of the soil, if you will, right? They've been planting the seeds. They've been trying to find ways to reshape the underground, but it's been from the ground up. So they do their research they know the effect on the ground. I think one of the biggest challenges, for example, with trafficking, mm -hmm. right, is that you have policies made by people who have no idea what the lived experience is. And so you have this dramatic disconnect between policy and lived experience. So, you know, feminist organizers, they do their homework. They know what the lived experience is about. And they also know that you need multiple disciplinary perspectives, multiple trainings. You got to bring different people to the table, people with different types of expertise in order to solve some of the world's most pressing and wicked problems.